Hello and welcome to Wrestling With Real Estate, where we look to chokeslam all your real estate problems. I'm your host, former WWE wrestler and now Cirque du Soleil performer, and of course, multi-family real estate investor, Barry Griffiths. Now today we're joined by Russ Kleist again. Hey Russ, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, man? How are you, Barry? I'm doing awesome, man. I'm doing awesome, man. I'm excited to have you back awesome. on. We had, a, we had a great conversation last time about the Las Vegas market. Um, yeah, man. For people who don't know, this is Russ the Realtor. So he's a realtor here in the Las Vegas market. Awesome guy, great realtor. Um, and we decided, we talked about it, and we thought we'd do like a monthly update about what's going on in the Las Vegas market. Because, you know, who doesn't want to know what's going on in the Las Vegas market, right? It's a pretty yeah, good man. market. And a lot of crazy <laughs> craziness going on. Uh, before we dive into all the craziness of the Las Vegas market, do you want to just give a high level uh, intro and see yourself so that people who maybe didn't listen to the last episode can get an idea of who you are and what you've been up to? Yeah, man. Uh, first of all, thanks again for uh, letting me be on your show. Uh, last time was fun, so I was happy to have the second opportunity. So, uh, yeah, my name is Russell Kleiss. I'm a realtor here in Las Vegas, so I help with buyers, sellers, and investors. So if uh, any of you guys have any questions about that, um, I'm sure my information will be uh, linked down below. So feel free to reach out to me. So, yeah, that's who I am. Very cool, very cool, very cool. Well, let's get into the fun stuff. Tell me a little bit about what Ooh. on earth is going on <laughs> Man. In, the, in the Las Vegas market. What's not <laughs> going on, right? I'm sure uh, like all you guys out there, I mean, I'm sure everyone's hearing like that market's hot, you know, bidding wars left and right, all of that stuff, yada, yada, yada. We're, we're all hearing the same thing. And uh, what we don't know is how long are we going to uh, start hearing this, right? Like how, how long is this going to last? Because... Um, it's, it's not getting any better from what I've seen, um, maybe, maybe a little bit, and we'll kind of touch base on that when we go over the numbers. Um, but the one thing I've been noticing is, is uh, this crazy market is uh, definitely bringing out some crazy sellers out there. You know, I mean, we're, we're seeing some crazy prices uh, for some of these houses. And, uh, you know, we just got to be honest. And a, a lot of these houses, the biggest issue is uh, if it's going to appraise or not. You know, I've actually been seeing a lot of the houses that go into contract. I want to say maybe about a good, good 40 to 50 percent of them get back on the on the market. And, um, you know, maybe a couple of things, maybe if it's uh, within their due diligence period or I'm, I'm guessing a lot of it's like appraisal issues. Um, but that's kind of like what we're, we're dealing with right now. Still very low inventory, um, still a high demand of buyers. We, we've got uh, that. California exodus still coming our way and uh, all along with the rest of the country. So uh, I know Vegas is one of the top markets out there that um, that just continues to grow. Yeah, and uh, we're, the date is May 27th, now June 1st, right? Everything yeah. is supposed to open back up to 100% here in Vegas, right? It's just like yeah, it's back it's business as usual from June 1st kind of thing, right? So in, in yeah. four or five days, you know, so you've got to imagine, you got to wonder like, uh, is things going to get hotter with everything, you know, people, maybe more people going back to work, more people making more money. Is that right. going to affect the housing market even more? Right. Is, you know, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to think that that would be a negative, right. Against anything. Yeah. I, I think that would still uh, contribute to the increasing demand for people wanting to get into to real estate. Um, yeah. It's crazy, man. I was actually out. Um, I, I don't go to the strip very often, but you know, when I've got friends in town, you know, I'll meet them up and, uh, yeah, Vegas is back, man. It's, <laughs> I mean, the strip looked back to normal. I mean, we, we stepped foot into the Venetian and it was like bananas in there. I'm, I'm just like, this is like, we're, we're for real back. This is crazy. And um, I've got friends that work in the casino industry and they said, yeah, they're not mandating any mask anymore. They can't even ask them to, to, to wear a mask. It's just a, uh, it's just a hundred percent back. So um what does that mean? I think that's good for our economy, especially the people that live here in Vegas. But I think that's also going to now bring more people that makes it more comfortable, comfortable for them to travel. Because I know I've had clients in the past that just kind of uh, put their plans on a little halt right here because of just traveling. But now I think more and more people are becoming more comfortable. They're coming into town. They want to, uh, you know, have fun on the strip, but check out what Vegas has to offer because everyone's hearing about like, you know, Vegas booming right now. So a lot of record highs uh, this past month. Yeah, this might be the, uh, for, for the foreseeable future, the new normal, right? These bidding yeah. wars is, is, you know, 
create crazy sellers because it's a sell a completely seller's market. It could not, be more, market. could not be more of a seller's market, right? And I'm sure what's gonna might happen as well is before I, what I was hearing from people saying is that they wanted to see what happened with the pandemic before buying. Hey, I want to buy a house, but I want to see what happens. Well, right. I don't want to say the pandemic is over. It's not like the disease is gone, but there's, you know, yeah. everything is from an eco economic standpoint, everything's to be, you know, it's lift off right now, right? Right. The rocket is, is going up in the air and it's just oh, like yeah. the economy. So it's, you know, it might be it bring even more bias. So it's just fascinating to see, but um, you know, what, yeah. in, ter in terms of the numbers, maybe let's jump into the numbers a little bit. So even though we're in May now, we're looking back to last month. Um, yeah. So, so numbers wise, um, we've got some record highs. Uh, some of these year over year numbers now is going to be a little off. I think going forward for the next few months, right? Because uh, that this is where we we started the lockdown April, right? So at that the first couple months, first few months, people didn't know what to do. People were just staying home. So um, a lot of the uh, these increases in percentage year over year is a little uh, all over the the place, but. Um, you know, uh, I did this past month, you know, we're in May now uh, when this is airing. And, uh, you know, this past month, I did see a, a, a nice increase of uh, inventory. Uh, not much, but uh, a, a little bit to give you give us a little light at the end of the tunnel. Right. And uh, when I was talking about these crazy sellers, um, you know, some of these sellers now they're just kind of like way out there just overpricing their houses. And some of those uh, way overpriced homes aren't getting that bidding war, uh, like we mentioned um, earlier. So they're not they're not getting that bidding war that they expected. So they're not getting that overinflated um, sale price that they wish. But um, yeah, let's let's start off with a uh, number of units sold for April. So uh, for April, we sold three thousand five hundred twenty eight homes. So year over year, that was actually up 79%. So that's a huge increase, right? Again, no, no one was really selling homes uh, from, from uh, April of last year. But here's the crazy part. So our new median home price, now this is median home prices based on homes sold. Las Vegas is at an all time high, $375,000. That is, uh, at last month we were at 363. It's crazy. a $12,000 jump in, in a month. One month. In one, one month. month. Wow. That's, uh, and, I, and that's a Las Vegas high right now. I mean, $375,000. So that, that 300 to let's say $400,000 range, that's a very popular, um, you know, price range for most buyers, for most first time home buyers. And uh, this kind of clearly shows that the, the, the driver of this increase is a lot of these cash buyers, you know, a lot of these cash buyers from California, New York, you know, the big, the bigger markets, and also um, people willing to pay over the appraised value. Mm. You know what I mean? So what I've been telling my buyers right now that aren't cash buyers, you know, you're keep, you're competing with cash buyers, which is hard to compete with those, but some people have a lot of money saved up, you know, more than the, the 10 or the 20%. They've got some cash and they're willing to, you know, waive the appraisal to just cover the difference. So um, this huge increase in our median clearly shows the drivers are just people with a, a lot of cash in the bank. Yeah, man. And, and then are you seeing any buyers that are saying, hey, this is just nuts. Let me wait a bit. Or is everyone kind of like, hey, it's hot right now. I need to get in because it might go up even more. <laughs> it's great. I'm getting I'm getting both. Okay. But I think I'm getting more people that's just like, just getting really discouraged. Um, but you know, one thing is like, now that we know that the, the home median, uh, the median home price right now is 375, you know, um, that really puts us in a range where a lot of the, the nicer new home construction is uh, up around that range. So I think a lot of my buyers that I've been speaking to, and along with my colleagues that I've spoken to, that they're feeling the same thing is, uh, you know, buyers are getting a little bit more discouraged and they don't want to deal with the bidding wars. And um, if they have an opportunity to get into a new home, they'll, they'll rather lock in a new home, uh, you know, if, if they give the opportunity. Um, you know, the, the new home construction has its own challenges as well. Uh, I think we mentioned in the last video, you know, they're doing lotteries and, and uh, you know, name your price. But, um, you know, now it's, uh, 
it's a whole different playing field because of the the increases of our, our median so wow uh, what's the name of the price how does that you just put a, a price in and whoever's the highest wins or is it yeah it, it's pretty nuts um i haven't had any clients go through that we, we almost did pulte is actually one of the builders that for their new communities that uh, it's kind of like a name your price so what they do is like let's say they'll have a base price and a, a required earnest money deposit so they'll basically give you a form after you've already been pre-approved with them, of course, because all the builders are requiring you um, to get pre-approved before getting on any type of list. Um, so, of course, if you want any information on that, I can give you more details on that. But Pulte is they're doing the name your price. So, you know, whether it's a increase in like uh, the earnest deposit, uh, increase in the sale price, there's really no uh, <laughs> right number there. It's just like what are you willing to pay is what they're asking you. You know, it's, it's crazy. The, it's the wild west, right? There's it's no the doubt. wild west, man. That's <laughs> what it is. Guns are blazing and uh, anything goes right now, man. And uh, that's, that's where we're at. So yeah. um, condos, they're actually, and condos and townhouses have uh, gone up a lot too. Um, the median price sold on those is $202,450. And last month we sold um, a little over a thousand uh, units over there, which uh, year over year, that's a 132% um, increase. Um, again, super all over the place. But um, yeah, I think a lot more people now are considering, you know, everyone want, you know, traditionally last year, $300,000, you can get a pretty nice home, but now it's like, okay, you're not getting the, the home that you want, maybe not the area that you desired. But now they're coming out with some really, really nice um, townhomes over here. So I think a lot more people are considering that as well. Yeah, well, I think it's kind of like, if you have no choice to, to some degree, right? If you're losing out on adventure deals, well, look, let me take into consideration a townhome, right? Something I might not have looked before, but there's so much competition now, right? That's kind of, I think that's what buyers have to do. They have to reevaluate and see what they're willing to, willing to purchase and just to get into something. They just want to get into something. Yeah. Exa exactly. People, yeah. And I think people got to live somewhere and, and rent rent is not any better. The rental market's actually been crazier and um, it, rent is increasing. So I think, uh, like we said, I think people are more eager to kind of get into something right away, especially how, you know, these, these same people, they thought they were waiting for a, a correction uh, real soon, but we're just not seeing that. So um, again, earlier I said uh, about un our inventory is increasing. So new listings, it did increase for the month of April. Um, new listings, 3,699 units, which is uh, up uh, almost 4% from the month prior. Uh, median price of new listings, 390,000. So um, you can see where, our, <laughs> where <laughs> our median home prices are is heading over here. So um, Number of homes being sold within 30 days, 82%. So 82% of homes are, are off the market uh, within 30 days. And honestly, I, I'd like to believe that's really less than two weeks. They don't show that metric here, but um, you know, a lot of these homes are gone the first day, um, if not within that first week. It's just that crazy out here in Vegas. Yeah, I, I, what would be an interesting stat, I don't think you have it, maybe I should have asked, is how many of these are cash buyers? How many of these purchases are cash buyers? That would be an interesting, because I'm that sure- That would be very interesting. I, I don't I think, I don't know if our MLS, I should look into that, because okay. that would actually be a good metric, because um, we know for every house, there's like at least 10 offers, right? Um, and I think we, we spoke about this before, a lot of them are cash, but some of these cash buyers are also not winning, you know? You got to yeah. come up with like cash way above and uh, which there are, but I think there's still some cash buyers that are like just asking just that list price or maybe just slightly over where there's people with just uh, a bucket of cash and plus combined with financing, they're willing to cover that, that appraisal difference. So yeah, that, that, that'll actually be a good one, but not homes are obviously with that number. It's like homes are just flying off the shelves still. Yeah. Yeah. When you think about it, that, as a cash buyer, coming in at list price is probably not enough. <laughs> so again, this is, when you think about that, like, like you're offering cash for what they're asking, and right. it still probably isn't enough because you know someone with maybe conventional financing is willing to come in, yeah, um, wait, you know, 
do an a, a appraisal addendum where they say that they'll they'll cover the difference. So yep. you know, as a buyer, if they've got conventional financing and they're willing to cover the difference, yeah, that kind of protects you in, in a lot of ways. And you're thinking, okay, I can get 20, 30 grand more for doing that. I'll take that risk. It is like I think we we said it before too. Like these guys can make an easy twenty thousand dollars more if they just wait that 30, uh, 30 days for the uh, transaction to close. So I mean. Yeah, you know, in a traditional market, yeah, cash is king, right? Like, you know, actually they, they had they had the leverage to maybe lowball a little bit, and um, yeah, not not these days. I've been seeing uh, cash getting beaten out by uh, people financing, so anything goes. Yeah, yeah. And what uh, what about days on market currently? What are, what are the days on market? Yeah, that's what we covered. So days on market oh. is not much, man. Oh, okay. Like sorry. I said, like 82 percent is less than thirty days. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. And, I thought that was day, days to okay. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's an increase, uh, seventy four percent increase from the the month prior. So it's just, as you can see, it's still the same pattern. Things are things are still moving, and so for anyone still thinking about on the fence, like, is it still a good time to buy, or or should I wait? Um, you know, really, I think the, the the question you should really ask yourself right now is, uh, you know, just think about what's been going on, and if if this will continue for the rest of the year. Um, more than likely it is, you know, so I think right now, if you're thinking about buying, you should really start getting, getting in right now. Cause I don't know how long this is going to last, but, uh, I'm pretty confident there's still a lot of room for some, uh, nice appreciation until we start seeing some sort of a correction, because here's a couple of things that's coming up. Um, you know, uh, the CDC, I think they just, uh, are looking to expire the uh, eviction, the eviction moratorium is supposed to expire. Uh, this coming June, and uh, I believe the forbearance uh, Biden was talking about, it was supposed to expire in June, and if that all does expire, now a lot of these landlords or homeowners uh, will feel comfortable putting their home on the market. You know, rates are still low, because um, that's, that's a lot of the, uh, the challenges with some investors and that have rentals here is uh, they can't get their house on the market because of the tenant. So I actually noticed a lot of the listings that I have or, or have seen, they won't allow the house to be sold or seen until July because uh, they, they kind of have an idea that or hoping that's when um, the eviction moratorium ends. So everything should open up. So uh, that should definitely help out our inventory and uh, kind of uh, squeeze that, uh, that demand a little bit, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It helped with the demand. Yeah, but there's still so much demand that you know, it needs to be like we talked about last time. We need to be from where we are now. We need to be substantial to see you know price drops and any kind of. They'll, yeah. You know, it's hard. To, you can't say they'll. There's not. There'll never be a crash, but it's hard to see anything from here. It's, it's sort of nothing. And, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely hard to see that in the near, like especially for this year. You know, I think we're gonna wrap up this year with some uh, good appreciation uh, for most uh, homeowners and the uh, sellers still getting a top dollar. You know, yeah. for the rest of the year. So, for sure. you know, once once the the market gets uh, flooded with more inventory, that just means more competition for these uh, sellers. So, um, sellers should kind of think twice if they should need if they should uh, sell right now or not. Any uh, is that all the stats? Or did we did it? Did it? Did yeah, I yeah, that's like the main okay. stuff that's going on. Cool. Over here, yeah, so. yeah. And then in terms of investment, what do you are you seeing people? I just is anyone getting any investments right now or is it just so yeah, competitive actually, it's hard okay you know and it's funny you brought that up i was actually talking about this with another colleague of mine you know i think in the pan when the pandemic hit i think a lot of investors put a halt they didn't know what was going to happen either right actually i think a lot of these guys were thinking about liquidating like as soon as possible but recently i've been seeing a lot of investors actually picking up more properties now and flipping them real fast now. I, I see a lot of flippers now. Um, a lot of the homes that are listed right now are flippers, you know, are flip properties. So actually I've been seeing a lot more of those uh, on the market. Um, I've also uh, seen and heard a lot of uh, these investors are actually taking more risk and flipping more in the uh, the luxury side. You know, uh, a lot of people were doing the, you know, the two to $300,000 range, but I think now they're kind of, a lot more of them are venturing in the the higher markets, you know, 500,000, a uh, million plus, and uh, kind of flipping those because um, they're seeing some really good returns. So uh, yeah, it's funny you brought that up. I, I definitely have seen more investors uh, coming out to, to play again. And, um, you know, 
Uh, I'm not sure about rentals specifically, those investors, but more like investors as far as like flipping and all of that. So with a 12 grand, you know, yeah. appreciation in the, in the, in the median um, home price, like you, you almost can buy it and not do anything. Right. And it's like, so exact. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. You, you, you almost don't have to do anything if it's clean or just kind of freshen it up. And um, uh, I'm telling you, I've been seeing some crazy prices on there. Um, yeah, actually, recently I was dealing with a, a fifty thousand uh, dollar appraisal gap, which was was it was not fun, uh, but uh, thankfully uh, it worked out in my buyer's favor. They were they were able to drop the prices down, and uh, we had to do a little challenge with the appraiser uh, to kind of like move up and shrink that gap already. But um, yeah, it, it was it was a it was a flip property, you know. Um, we didn't expect it to be that big of a gap, but it did. Uh, but that's kind of another example of what we're dealing with. So, yeah, that you brought up a good point. We'll wrap up in a second now. But the appraisal thing has got to be tough because who'd want to be an appraiser in this market? I guess everyone, because you get plenty of work. I guess right, you got plenty of work. But it's how do you keep up with right when prices are appreciating this much? I was listening to some, some, another podcast yeah. about that, and it's like how do you keep up with that? It's almost impossible because you're <laughs> almost you know predicting future value to some extent because there's no comps to. to yeah to 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 meet what where the price is right now because it's moving so fast so as an appraiser like, how do you keep up and i guess the interesting okay. thing is what 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 do you how did you guys handle that you said you guys did an, uh, a challenge on the appraisal like how, how did you guys handle where did you go with that yeah i mean you know i think these appraisers like it's it's almost like the uh the market is in their hands you know <laughs> it's how i feel like it's, it's up to them you know so yeah. they i feel like they do have some control and um you know they, they've got a they've got to account for the, the way the market is trending too, but you never know with these, with these appraisers, you know, there could be a, a, an appraiser that's having a bad day and um, you know, that doesn't really give a crap and just kind of uh, values it as uh, the last house that was sold. And, you know, and that, and that just ruins the whole transaction, you know, and then you can, might, you might have someone that's having a great day. And um, you know, I like to, I try to be there with the appraiser to try to, you know, build that rapport and kind of maybe point some things out that they, uh, they might've missed, but sometimes that, that still doesn't help. So, um, yeah, they, they've got a tough job, but I'm sure they're, they're doing good for their business these days. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Crazy, man. Well, Russ, man, thanks again for coming on, man. This is like the market. I live in Las Vegas, <laughs> but it's like, I wasn't as aware as, as all this stuff is going on. And it's just, it's just craziness, right? And it's just, it's interesting at the same time to see to super see interesting what's, yeah what's going on what's going to happen like where are things going like there's just so much going on and it's kind of a crazy time right now and just i appreciate you coming on and, and sharing yeah. all the information that this is awesome but um for people you know who are considering moving to vegas maybe investing in vegas maybe working to flip or whatever it is right if they're looking to, for a great realtor how can they get a hold of you you know, how should they get in touch? Yeah, man. You can find me in uh, all my social media platforms of uh, Rust the Realtor LV. Um, you can go directly to my website, yourlasvegasproperty.com. And um, if you want to give me a call or text, 702-483-0399. Holla at me. Perfect. <laughs> well, cool, Russ. Thanks, man. Have a great rest of your day, bro. All right, man. Enjoy. Later.